just a spirit man. So, Brother Fred. Tonight we're going to talk about friendship with God. We're doing a series on identity to destiny, and it's important for us to understand our identity, and only from that can we fulfill our destiny on the earth. Mm -hmm. um, but it's possible to have a, a distorted view of our identity, and uh, that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. Uh, many of us uh, just desire to be a good servant of God and to, to do what he tells us to do, but God wants us to be friends with him. You know, friendship is a lot different than servanthood. God has put things in your heart. God has put things in your heart that you cannot fulfill if you have the wrong identity, if you have a limited view of your identity. You know, God is preparing the body of Christ for the return of Jesus Christ. And let mm -hmm. me tell you, let me tell you right now that Jesus is not going to marry a slave girl and Jesus is not going to marry a servant girl. He's going to marry a bride, Ooh, a glorious yeah. bride prepared uh, for himself. Mm. And so this is not about servanthood. This is about friendship. God wants us to be friends and he has poured things into your heart that you cannot fulfill on this earth. Uh, if you do not understand that your identity, you're called to be a <laughs> friend of God, not just a servant. Sure, we want to uh, obey God. We want to do what he tells us to do. Uh, and a friend is going to do that. A servant. Mm -hmm. See, that's just basically the agenda. I have so many tasks today. If I'm a servant, I have tasks today that I have to fulfill. And if I fulfill those tasks, I I'm okay. Uh, but that's just a servant mentality. A and we've been called to something beyond that. Amen. And if we continue to have a servant mentality that we're just about fulfilling tasks each day and our life is about fulfilling tasks, the doing the things that God has uh, for us to do, it's only a limited view of who we really are. And it's going to restrict and limit our destiny and our purpose, fulfilling purpose on this earth. We need to understand that God mm -hmm. wants you to be his friend. Now, friend uh, is going to spend time with the Lord. Then that, amen, that amen. A friend is a lover of God. Uh, a servant is just a person who goes about doing what he's told to do or she's told to do, just fulfilling mm -hmm. tasks. But a, a friend of God mm -hmm. wants to be close to God, wants to spend time with God, think God's thoughts, do God's deeds, and get God's results. That's a friend of God, not a servant of God. A servant is performance oriented, only concerned about doing things, doing what they're commanded and told to do. But God wants friends and Jesus Christ is going to marry at a higher level than a servant girl. Mm, hallelujah. Amen. Now, I want Amen. to start with a couple of people in the Bible who are referred to as friends. And the first one is Abraham, and the second one is Moses. We can learn a lot about friendship from these two uh, people. Uh, James 2, I believe it's verse 23, says that Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness, Amen. and he was a friend of God. Hallelujah. He's our father. And Abraham is our father. He's the father of our faith. And we want to follow Abraham's faith. We want that kind of faith, the faith that moves us into friendship with God and not just uh, servanthood. I want you, and of course, we'll always serve God. We want to serve God. There's no doubt about that, but that's not who you are. You're called mm -hmm. to be a friend, friend of, of God. God. You need to see yourself as a friend of God. Many people are just satisfied mm -hmm. uh, for a mediocre life, just doing assignments. But let me tell you, it's so much more. God has so much more for you that you can only fulfill if you understand your true identity. 
not a limited view of your identity, thinking you're a servant. Now, we'll always serve God. Well, that, that's in our heart. But it's about friendship. We're a lover of God, a, a lover of God, love time, love to be with God, love to uh, see his face and, and be in his presence. That's what a, that's what a friend is about. We're, we love to spend time with our friends. Uh, hallelujah. That's right. Moses. Okay, now Moses <clears throat> appeared to uh, Abraham uh, many times and uh, began to reveal promises to him and covenants and what was going to happen in the future and it, what was going to happen to his descendants. And so let's just go through a few of these. Uh, uh, chapter 12, and uh, he talks about his promise that he's going to have uh, descendants and he's going to have a son and a descendants and an inheritance of a land and and in 15 Genesis 15 he talks about a covenant and he, he he repeats the promises he talks about he's going to have a son and of course at that time his name is Abram I want to make sure that you understand that his name is Abram up until uh, Genesis 17 so up until seven, Genesis 17 he's Abram, um, but at Genesis 17, he becomes Abraham, but we're talking about the same man, but it's Genesis 15 I want to refer to, and in Genesis 15, uh, Ab Abram is, is told to bring some sacrificial uh, animals, and so he, he sacrifices them, and he cuts them in pieces, and um, then in the uh, middle of the night, God puts a deep, brings him into a deep sleep and uh, has this covenant. He cuts a covenant with, with uh, Abram at that time. And, and in cutting that covenant, he, he makes the promises. He's going to have son. He's going to have descendants. He's going to have an inheritance, a land uh, to inherit. Now, let's move forward to Genesis 17. And, and now... So there's been about 25 years, 24, 25 years elapsed during this time between Genesis 17 and uh, Genesis, uh, uh, Genesis 12 and Genesis 17. And so he had had promises that he's going to have a son and uh, descendants uh, from that son. And this is Genesis 17. And now it's time for the fulfillment of the promises. He, he's been meeting with, mm. with Abraham, Abram, a, a, but now it's time for the fulfillment. So about 24, 25 years. And uh, so 75, the promises were made, but here he's 99. Uh, his uh, wife uh, is 89. And a year from now, they're going to have the son, uh, Isaac. Okay. So Again, he repeats the promise, and this time to show that it's it's about to happen. The time of fulfillment uh, is going to happen, and uh, this his name is changed to Abraham. His wife's name is changed to Sarah, and so his name becomes the father of many nations, mm -hmm. and that's who we are. He's the, he's our father. He's the father of our faith, and so the son is born. Okay, so. Why was Abraham called a friend of God? Well, it was because of this commitment of that covenant. Mm. It, it's a covenant friendship that I'm talking about. And then in uh, 22, Genesis 22, he is told to sacrifice his only son, Isaac. He's told to sacrifice, and he's willing to do that. And what we see here in a covenant is that what a one person has it's available for the other person. Mm. And so what God had was available for Abraham and what Abraham yeah. had was available for God. He needed it. And so God mm. needed a son mm. uh, and, and uh, he needed Abraham to offer his son and Abraham was fully committed, fully, fully persuaded, committed. Hallelujah. fully persuaded and committed that he was going to offer his son uh, Isaac as a sacrifice. And I know that you're all familiar with this story. He takes his uh, son up there. He calls him a lad. We don't know exactly how old uh, he might have been at this point in time. He he knew uh, 
that they had wood and they had fire, but, Where but where's the, sac the sacrifice? <laughs> so this is not just a little child. Uh, he might have been a grown man. He might have been a, a, young, uh, a young person, but nonetheless, uh, and one thing I know is that at, at the age of 100, let's say 120 now, or 130 of uh, Abraham was, uh, that if Isaac wanted to, he could have beaten his father off. <laughs> and he said, no way, I'm not going to let you bind me up. I'm no way I'm going to do that. But he was, he was fully persuaded. Yeah, he said, yeah, sure he was that. fully persuaded. Yeah, I, yeah. Isaac and Abraham, mm -hmm. they went up there together. Now, mm -hmm. they wouldn't take any servants with them. Listen to me. He wouldn't take, they wouldn't take the servants with them. This is about, oh, father and son. This is about friends that they were close, but they didn't take servants up there. You can't, there's places you can't go if you're just a servant. If that's Woo! the way you Lord. see your identity, there are places you cannot go. The places that are important mm, mm. in the supernatural realm, you've got to be a friend Hallelujah. to go up to the Hallelujah. higher level. Okay. So they get up there on the mountain, they're willing to, Abraham's willing to sacrifice his only son Isaac, and Isaac is willing to be sacrificed and be bound. And and here Abraham has a knife in his hand and is about uh, to sacrifice his son. And, and, and it says the angel of the Lord. Uh, this was a test. Says the angel of the Lord stopped him, and he was quick enough to hear the Lord. Uh, the mm, voice of the Lord, the angel, enough, I mean. but, but uh, you know, it's, that's probably the Lord himself, Jesus Christ, uh, because he said, now I know, now I know, now I know. oh, see, he, he's seeing the cross out of uh, hundreds of years from there, mm, uh, mm. but because they were in covenant, uh, Abraham had to offer what he had because God needed it at that moment, and then because what was Abraham's became God's and what was God's became Abraham's. And so hundreds of years later, what, what Abraham and his descendants needed, they needed a sacrificial son, a sacrificial lamb, the lamb of God uh, who would go to the cross. And because mm -hmm. Abraham offered his son Isaac, now God the Father offers his son Jesus Christ on the cross I mean, because it's a covenant relationship. And Abraham and his descendants needed the sacrifice. Woo, hallelujah. So, so on, a, on a covenant friendship, what is mine is yours, and what is yours is mine, mine. when I need it, and we needed Jesus to go to the cross. I mean, and it came out of the covenant friendship between God and uh, Abraham. Oh, that's good. Now, that's good. here's an important thing, and, we, and we've skipped over Genesis 18. Genesis 18, God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. This is what he's going to do with a friend. See, he's not going to do anything without talking to Abraham. That's who is right. His friend. Amen. He Abraham. said, I'm going to go down there and, and send these angels down there to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, but I've got to talk it over with my friend. Before I do any major thing, I've got to talk it over Ooh, with my hallelujah. friend. Hallelujah. I've got to have an exchange with my friend. I, I've got to call him into my council room. The Lord says, I've got to call him, call my friends into the council room because I'm going to change history. There's going to be a, 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 an event that is going to change history on the earth. And I've got to have a friend to talk about it. I, 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 I've got to go over my ideas with my friend. And, and see, a friend is different than a servant. God doesn't reveal. God doesn't reveal his ways to his servants. Mm -hmm. He reveals his ways to his friends. And, and so uh, Abraham was in a unique <laughs> place as a friend that he could intercede for Sodom and Gomorrah. That's what friendship is about. Now let's talk about the second man. And his name was Moses. And in uh, um, Exodus 33, verses 11 through 13, he said, I have talked face to face with Moses like I do a friend, mm, I do like a friend, friend. like a friend. And I've shown favor uh, to Moses. And Moses said, mm. if you've, if I've found favor in your sight, 
uh, then show me your ways and that I might know you. See, here's, here's it talking about knowing you, Lord, in order that I might find favor. Okay, so this is a, a circle, a really interesting circle. Uh, God said, I, I have favor on you, Moses. You're my friend. And see, friendship brings something. It carries favor. Hallelujah. God's favor Hallelujah. Was, it carried it to Abraham. He said, uh, I'm going to bless you and you will be a, be a blessing. blessing. So you cannot, listen to me, you cannot bless other people if you haven't been blessed. You've got to seek blessing. You've got Amen. to seek it. Hallelujah. You've got to seek blessing because if you don't, if you haven't been blessed by God, you have nothing to bless other people with. That's a sad state to be in, mm -hmm. that you can't bless other people. And, and so here we see it in, in Moses. He, he said, you've said you've shown me favor. Now show me your ways that I might know you, that I might find favor in your sight. You see this big circle? It's knowing him, favor. Knowing his ways, knowing him, favor. It just goes all around and around. The more we know his ways, the more we know him, uh, yes. the more favor, favor we, have. we have. Friendship carries He's with it favor, favor and blessings. Now, mm. uh, Psalm 67 said, uh, bless us, bless us. Why would we want to be blessed? Because it's going to reveal your salvation to the ends of the earth. Psalm 67. Mm. We mm. want blessings. blessings. Because there's going, to th there's going to be things that come out of that will know God's ways and there'll be his salvation will be revealed to the ends of the earth. We need to be a friend of God. Mm -hmm. We need to be seeking his ways and, and believing for his favor. Now, this is not about favor, but friendship carries favor with Hallelujah. it. Hallelujah. That's an important thing. And we can't have anything to bless others. What do I have that I haven't received? Mm -hmm. What do I have that I haven't received? Well, we've got to receive it from God. Be blessed and you'll be a blessing. That's what a covenant friendship is about. You'll be blessed. And you'll be a blessing to other people. Amen, now, amen. listen, let's just follow Moses here in Exodus 32 and Exodus 33. And, and uh, Moses is up on the mountain with uh, God and, and the people down there, they're building a metal calf. And, and they're saying, this is the God that brought you out of, out of Egypt. And, you know, that God got a little angry, he, burning hot, I think. And, <laughs> and uh, I'm going, my anger burns. <laughs> Burn. And he said to Moses, listen to this. He said, these people, your people that you brought out of Egypt, I'm going to kill. Just <laughs> get out of my way. But see, here's a friend. A friend can plead yes. a, a with God. They can intercede just like Abraham did for Sodom and Gomorrah. And a, a friend can plead yes. and intercede yes. and, and exchange ideas and come into the council room uh, of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's not everybody that gets there. I tell you, servants don't get to go there. They don't get to have this interchange that Abraham had with them about Sodom and Gomorrah and, and the, this interchange that uh, Moses had with uh, uh, about killing uh, all of the descendants of Israel <laughs> that uh, had come out of Egypt. And, and God said, just get out of my way. The, I'm going to kill these people that you brought your people that you brought out. And, and Moses, listen to what Moses said. He said, these are your people. You brought them, you out. Brought them out. out. Glory to God. So you have to have this exchange with God that you don't get as a servant. And then God said, okay, I'm going to go ahead and send you into the promised land, but I am not going to go. God said, I'm not going to go, but I'll send an angel with you. Now, here's an important point, really important point. A friend is more interested in the presence of God than in the promises. Moses Ooh, said, Lord. I'm not going, God. If you don't, don't go, go with me, you don't go with me. If, the pre if your presence doesn't go with me, I don't want to go because right. a friend yeah. is more concerned about the presence, presence of, God of God than the promises of God. Oh, that's See, good. God was going to go Ooh. ahead. God was going to go ahead and give them the promises, but he was hot over them calling this uh, metal calf 
that they had made mm -hmm. and calling it a god that yeah, brought them out of, uh, brought them out of <laughs> Egypt and, and uh, uh, God didn't like it he he didn't like it and and first he didn't kill them because Moses interceded for them but now he's not going to go up to Israel uh, with them but he's going to send an into angel the promised land. into the promised land he, he's going to send an angel with them so they'll get the promises but not the presence of God oh dear Jesus not the presence of God Woo! you can have the promises of God but without Woo! the presence of God oh, but if you're a friend of God oh, you put some priorities uh, on things and your priority is that you'd prefer the presence, presence of, of god, god over the promises of god oh, this is real important oh that's good we, we've got that's to know good. our awesome. Awesome. position as a friend and how a friend responds and what a friend does a friend thinks god's thoughts a friend does that's what god god's deeds. deeds and a friend gets god's results uh they're interested in god in the relationship with god they those friends are lovers of god how do you see yourself do you see yourself as a servant oh i'll just get up and whatever the lord tells me today mm -hmm. i'll do it or do you see yourself as a friend that you want to be in his presence today? You want to be in God's presence. You want to find uh, what God is doing and, and fulfill what he, what's in his heart. But not only that, share with God what's in your heart. See, I, I'm going to give you this uh, recent example that, that I really think uh, was not necessarily God's plan, but something that Sherry had in her heart. Uh, for her dad her dad is 95 years old and he likes to go to a restaurant that's 40 miles away from his home and, mm -hmm. and get a little steak mm -hmm. and and, mm -hmm. and the reason he had to travel he, he likes that little steak the reason he <laughs> likes that, that that to go there he likes that steak but it's 40 miles away yes and sherry said i'd like to have that restaurant in the city where my father lives and i'd like for it to be at this intersection you see that that's her heart that was her heart for her father mm -hmm. and the next time she visited out there she had a big sign and it said this is going to be the future home of this restaurant of that restaurant hallelujah that, that was hallelujah. what was in her heart and she wanted it just simply to bless her father that her 95 year old dad didn't have to go drive 40 miles to get a meal that he wanted that he liked that, that's what a friend can do a friend mm. can pull uh oh, influence oh, can, can have, have influence with god and say okay this is where we this need a restaurant here. here right here because right this here. is where i have it in my heart mm. to have a restaurant mm -hmm. here this might not have been the big plan of god might have not have been uh, uh what he uh ha had had a plan from eternity yeah. but this was what was in her heart and, and it's coming to pass now and, and this is what a friend does see a friend exchanges ideas with the father mm -hmm. uh, a friend of god is going to show what's in my heart i'm going to bring uh, forth these ideas to you or well, what god has done with sherry and i over the years and i'm bringing this to closure mm -hmm. what god has done with us over the years is he has taken us to many different nations and and particularly the capital cities of many different nations around the world. And we have interceded for those nations. Yes, we have I interceded mean. there on the ground. We have interceded mm -hmm. there in front mm -hmm. of the capital buildings uh, for capitals uh, uh, of major cities around the world. I mean. And because we are friends of God and we can intercede uh, for people and we can intercede to bring forth uh, what needs to happen in different cities and we uh, we intercede for revival we carry revival where we go and, and we intercede for our nations around the world uh, for revival and cities around the United States we we intercede for these cities we go there on the ground and intercede and walk uh, through the cities and and intercede for them because we're friends of God and, and, and we're interceding just like Abraham was interceding for the people in Sodom and Gomorrah and just like Moses was interceding for the descendants uh, of Israel now 
Let's bring it up to the New Testament. Let's bring it up to the New Testament. And what I see in uh, John 15, 15, uh, Jesus said, I no longer call you servants, and some translations say slaves, but I call you friends. You're my friend. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. see, mm -hmm. Jesus is wanting you to come into a friendship with him. Hallelujah. And, and he, because, see, a servant or a slave does not know what their master is doing, doesn't know what's in the heart of the master. And so let me tell you, if your view of yourself of your identity is just a servant, then you're missing some things. You're missing what's in the heart of God because what's in the heart of God is revealed only to the friends. Now, how do we get to be a friend in the New Testament? Well, I'm glad you asked because <laughs> Peter said, Peter said in, in um, uh, Matthew 19, 27 through 13, he said, we've left off. We have left oh, all. We left Here. all. Oh, God. Oh, remember Abraham? Hallelujah. Fully committed. The 12 disciples, fully committed. I, I'm talking about before uh, Judas got uh, got a dumb spirit on him <laughs> and, and uh, disobeyed and betrayed Jesus. But, but at that point, these guys, 12 of them, had left everything. Now, this mm -hmm. is Jesus' response because this is what friendship about. These are the people he called his friends. These were ones who are fully committed. Hallelujah. Fully Hallelujah. committed to Jesus. They had left their uh, family. They had left their wives. They had left their mother and mm -hmm. father. And they had left their sisters and brothers. And their they businesses. Were, they were fully committed to Jesus. And these are the people he said, you are my friends. I call you my friends. Now, he said, uh, because you have left these things, uh, you will receive a hundredfold return. So there is a return. There are blessings. There are favors of being friends. And, and it goes, it started way back there in the Old Testament, but we bring it up to the New Testament. It's still the same thing. To be a friend, you have to be fully committed to God, but it's going to carry some benefits. It's going to carry mm -hmm. some blessings and some, and some, uh, a favor upon your life if you are fully committed to God as a friend of God. And it's only then can you fulfill the things that are in your heart to fulfill. Now, now there's a lot of things that you might hear from God that you can do, yeah, but that's just a limited view of who you are and a limited view of what God has put for you and a limited view of your purpose and destiny to think that you're a servant, only a servant, and that you have to hear from God before you can do anything when God is calling you to a higher level, uh, to a level of friendship with God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're finished? No, I'm finished. Oh, dear. I'm stop. I'm stop. I'm stop. <laughs> He's not, he's not he's not finished he's not finished people he's not finished <laughs> hallelujah but we want to to give you opportunity to to make your comments and and uh again we uh we want to be friends with god we want to to know his heart we want to uh be part of what he's doing and and you know it says if we abide in him he's going to abide in us and and so we need to stay uh, with that connection, but I believe that he's calling all of us to a higher relationship with him, a deeper, a deeper relationship with him so that we can, we can know his ever move. We can know, uh, we can see what he's doing. We can hear what he's doing. Uh, we know uh, what he wants to do in Savannah. We, we know what he wants to do uh, in Texas. We know what he wants to do in New Mexico. We want to know what he wants to do in Florida, He we, in North Carolina. We want to know what he wants to do in California. Hallelujah. 